This isn't gonna work well. <laughs> it's fun. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's time for The Dirt Show. With your favorite host, The Dirt Guy. And it starts right now. Hey, welcome to Dirt Guy Drive Time, the show where I just drive around looking for Yoda. Hey, uh, today I'd like to do a little, uh, little talking about New Year's resolutions. But before we get to that, if you haven't pressed that subscribe button, can you do that right now? If you haven't pressed that subscribe button, can you do that right now? And in case you didn't hear that the first two times, if you haven't pressed that subscribe button, can you do that right now? <laughs> Man, I'm funny. So New Year's resolutions, we make them and we break them. For example, I resolved that in 2018, I was going to be completely naked for the entire year. On January 1st, uh, I changed my mind. As you can imagine, uh, those kind of resolutions, nah, a little tough to keep. But then there's resolutions like, I want to spend this year just every day trying to put good out into the world. That means uh, you just do good stuff and think good thoughts. And I have this belief that says that good will come back to me and, um, you know, make the world a better place. But um, I got to tell you something. You people at the restaurants are making it really tough. Here's an example. There's a place we went to for lunch a um, couple of days ago because my wife wanted some soup and salad. And so we went to a place that specializes in that. And we sat there for about, I don't know, 30 minutes before we got seated. I'll tell you why that bugged me in just a minute. After we got seated, we sat around for, I don't know, 10 minutes before the uh, server chick came over and even said, would you like a cup of coffee? Doesn't she know who I am? And then uh, I ordered my food and then the food took forever to come out. When it did, it was wrong. What the hell? Later on, the wife and I decided to go to dinner uh, a day or so later at another place that specializes in gourmet burgers and um, little red birds. We uh, sat there for like 15 minutes and then we went to the table and sat there for like 10 minutes before anybody came up and said, hey, would you like a beer? And um, then after we did, I waited till almost my dinner got there to get my drink. What the hell? And then the food showed up, and this kind of eh, this way, the food it was kind of okay. So th that one was okay. Here's why this bugs me. I really cannot stand it when I'm sitting there in the lobby, and they say, "Oh, it's about 30 minutes until you get to eat," and I'm looking at all these open tables. What the hell? And I say to the wife, "I'm like." Are you freaking kidding me? Why do I need to wait when there's all these open tables? Now, she's trying to put good out into the world. And so she says, well, they're really busy right now. That's probably why. I'm like, oh, uh-huh. And I, I said something under my breath. Poof, something like that. And then we went and sat down. And then I said, listen to this. The, she hadn't even talked to us yet. What is going on? I'm going to say something. And she says, hey, relax. I, I'm sure it's just because they're really busy. And I said, stop. Stop. This is what these people do for a living. They wait on people and give them food. Uh, if you want to keep your customers, why can't you schedule it accordingly? Why is it my problem that you people can't get another $5 an hour person in there to take my order to serve me your genetically modified food with preservatives in it? What the hell? Or at least give me my beer for crying out. That's what just cracks me up. It's like, where'd the customer service go? Now, on the subject of putting good out into the world, here's the other side of the coin, people. And that is justice. Justice has to happen. I mean, what goes around comes around, people. When you want to push me the other way, then I'm going to push back. That's all there is to it. Hey, thanks. I'm going to start a new religion. I think I'm going to be the the priest of my new religion. So I know I'm getting a little amped up and you know, you guys are kind of here for the funny, but um, you know, sometimes you gotta rant and uh, I wanna speak for the little people. So that led me to um, another thought I'll share with you real quick. I have this new saying, you are either on my team, you're an ally, or you can suck it. So what that means is, uh, if you're on my team, cool. Let's let's work together. Let's pull together. Let's get things done. If you're an ally, it means, well, at least you're not beating up on me and sticking pine cones in orifices of my body. That's not bad. I'll, I'll hang out with you. I'll tolerate you. And then there's the people that just not on my team, not an ally. And you know what? You people can suck it. You people are the 
dream killers. You people are the ones that make our lives miserable. I want to put good out in the world, and how am I going to do that if you're sucking me dry of all my good? If you're in the suck it category, uh, I block your number in my phone. I don't care who you are. I never want to speak to you again. Anyway, let me encourage you to do this. Help me with my new religion, which is put good out into the world, but there must be justice. And then it's kind of like a sidebar of that. You're either on my team, you're my ally, or you can suck it. What the hell? Like that. Anything. All right. Well, that's enough rant for one trip, I suppose. Hey, look, make this a non-sucky day, people. I'll talk to you later. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. Suck you, mother sucker.